Hey gang, it's Jim. Sorry about the uh, tardiness on my next video. Uh, it's It's been pretty busy down here and I just got uh, carried away with trying to finish stuff and, uh, and I forgot really just to make a video. So um, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of the cooler and uh, show you uh, what we've done and uh, what we still need to do and uh, here we go. So I think I told you guys on one of uh, the videos, might have been part three or part two, that I wanted to do kind of like this false door. And uh, these are all learning experiences for me. Uh, not really a carpenter or anything, but uh, kind of, you know, trying to do it yourself. Um, bought these hinges over here at Home Depot down here in Carmen. And, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020, but I probably should have gotten some type of hinges that were on the outside. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have had this gap here, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. doesn't look like there's a door there at all, uh, but that is our uh, door to the uh, walk-in cooler. Um, have a little uh, light switch. They call that an uh, apagador, on, off. So that's the switch out here. Still need to put a face plate in here. We were able to get uh, three-phase power up here uh, during my hiatus of uh, not doing a video. I apologize, but we're going to take a look and inside the cooler here. All right, you might see a little condensation on the floor. Um, I spilled some uh, beer the other day and I need to get in, a mop in here and clean it up. But uh, I got it all FRP'd out. Got a little handle on here. Uh, you like my low tech trim. In reality, no one else is going to see it, just me. But uh, we got our power in here. I got the CO2 ran to the lines. Um, I do have some beer hooked up. There's our mini split. Um, it does say 40 degrees in here. I'll be honest with you, I got mixed feelings right now. Uh, overnight, it was around 35 degrees in here. Um, it goes down to 35. 36 and then it bounces all the way back up to 44 and then comes back down. I believe that's just its cycle um, But uh, the beer temp I've taken the temp on the other side of the wall You know pouring some beer off and it is around 39 degrees. So I'd like it to be around 38 um, So I, I'm not sure I'm going to change it just yet and to be honest with you I still don't have all the doors closed on the outside of the building. So basically it's like this walk-in cooler is outdoors. So it's, you know, hitting ambient temperature from outside. So maybe it's working double time to try to reduce the temperature. And maybe when I close all the windows and I get uh, some air conditioning out in the main room, or some fans that'll bring down the temperature and this won't be working as hard. The last couple of days the weather has been pretty cool when I say cool, it's like 85 degrees, still 100% humidity. Um, and it's been running much better. Uh, last week, you know, um, before that, it was like 98 degrees. And, oh, it was just miserable. So I'm not sure. I'm, st I'm still watching out. If, if, and this is a one and a half ton unit. This is the unit that I took from the cooler downstairs and put up here. If I can't get this thing to stay consistently under 40, I may just swap this out for a two ton unit, just bite the bullet, buy, buy a new one, put one in here, use this one out in, in the main room with a couple other ones, that, you know, as air conditioning, or buy a little industrial one, um, because I really don't want to, you know, have warm beer going out there. Like I said, it's right around 39, 40 degrees in the, uh, let me switch this around, in the barrels, um, which, which is good. I, I like it to be 37. 38 consistently so that's where we are here um, everything's looking good on the walls I did have I so on this side I use like liquid nails okay it's, it's like their B brand down here I can't remember the name um, it wasn't liquid nails but it's kind of like it and I had to go in here and put screws in on this FRP here um, on this side the, the the locals use this stuff called um, 
Pegamento single mill. It's basically five, glue 5,000. And, um, and I haven't had to put any screws on this side. So it's a hell of a lot much stronger um, on it. I still need to put a base down. Haven't done that. Haven't decided whether we're gonna put tile down or one of those rubber bases. Um, but I still need to go ahead and, and put that in. We're gonna put a couple racks right here. But so far, it looks pretty good. I'll take you on the other side and show you the outside. Forgot to show you this. This is one of the, uh, the door pieces that I got off of one of the doors that, according to my father-in-law, was here for, you know, since the original building. So that has to be around 160 years old. So we grinded it, cleaned it up a little bit, and we put it on the door. It kind of looks nice. I like that. So um, I'm pretty sure this is basically the same as it was before. Uh, we do have six drafts um, that are on right now. These six, there's nothing. We tested it out yesterday. Um, beer was pouring, like I said, 39 degrees. It was cool, no one complained. Um, it was really nice. And then my stainless steel guy did this really cool drain. So um, I have, a drain hole here and a drain hole here and it comes down and this looks like you know a, basically it's a tri-clamp like you see in the brewery so it fits the motif and then it has a T right here and it goes straight into the uh, the walk-in cooler and uh, drains into a bucket now if you noticed in the um, in the cooler I didn't have any drains uh, in the uh, I didn't have any drains in the floor yet so I still need to cut the drains I need to put uh, tubing in and that's gonna be the next project here in the next couple weeks um, I'll have to do some let's see if I can turn this around I'll have to put some drains in here we're gonna put uh, you know the three bay sink the drain board so I'll have to uh, cut the concrete in here around and then we'll meet up through here but I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with this. It's it's working and uh, uh, I'm very surprised that I was able to do it. And like I said, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I'll just give you a look around here. I A restaurant across the street went out of business. These were tables from Corona. We're gonna sand them down and repaint them or lacquer stain them. Uh, but we got them for super, super cheap. And so I'm like, well, let's get some tables and chairs in here. But all, all the doors have been put in. That was done this last week. I still have these two windows here that we're just gonna put fixed glass. And then I have this piece up over here that needs to be covered. And then I have these pieces. So once we get that, I, I, I've been trying to get the pigeons out. I don't see any pigeons right now. There's one pigeon on the other side. I'll show you this. We have. A big piece of glass that we put in over here. Let's see if I can show you guys this. Oh, in fact, there's the lone pigeon right there. But uh, you can see, let's see if I can. That's all enclosed now, all glass. And it really looks nice uh, in the afternoon and uh, evening. Um, so we almost got it blocked off. We're almost there. Um, I have, uh, uh, I'm hoping that once we get this closed off and um, I got the bathroom downstairs done, I still have the bathrooms up here to do, but one bathroom will suffice. Once this is all closed off, oh, I haven't showed you guys the barandel. That's the railing. And this is the railing here. It's all made out of stainless steel. And they still need to do some work on it. They just put this up provisionally. They still need to come in here, weld those really good, and, and grind them down and polish them up. But uh, you can see the handrail down there. But uh, it's coming together. It's looking really nice. But once we get those doors covered up, those vin uh, windows, we should be able to get our license, our, our restaurant license, and then I can open at my leisure. They just want to make sure everything's all closed off and that I, you know, we don't have pigeon shit raining down on us and was able to clean the floor a little bit still need to come in here with uh i don't know power washer wash this up and soap and what you know just do our best and then we're going to stain it so anywho again i apologize for the long delay on uh, a video uh 
regarding distilling whiskey, vodka, all that fun, good stuff, I'm still kind of on hold with that. The, the taxes down here are much different than they are in the US. They, um, they have this thing called EEPS, it's I-E-P-S, um, they pronounce it EEPS. And for every bottle of beer that's under 14% alcohol, I have to pay 26.5% on the bottle cap, the bottle, the label, and the beer that's in it. If I'm selling a keg of beer to like a restaurant or to you know a distributor, um, I only pay for the liquid because the keg is returnable. Now for a bottle of beer, I can make those returnable, but it's a pain in the ass. You gotta be set up for cleaning the bottles and you know you gotta inspect them, make sure they're not cracked, make sure the labels are okay. Not set up for that right now. So we are selling some of our beer, our abejarina, which is just an ale, you know, of uh, 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 made with honey and malt here in Mexico. Um, we have a similar beer, in fact, the exact same recipe we have in the U.S. at the Fox Brew Pub, uh, which is our color Busby Honey. And then uh, we have a Munich Dunkel that we're selling down here at some of the restaurants. So I'm allowed to sell to the restaurants, um, but not inside here yet. But 26.5% is a hell of a lot of money, and the big uh, breweries, cervecerias, like Grupo Modelo, they pay a fraction of that. They pay like around 5%. And if you think about a barrel of beer in the United States, the TTB charges you, I think it's, I can't remember, I think it's like $7 per barrel, which is $3.50 per half barrel. That's your normal keg size that you see in college parties and whatnot. Um, this is like $10 for a half barrel, <laughs> okay? This is ridiculous amount of money that they're charging you. And I do you know we're having to, I'm not part of this group yet, I, I wanna be a part of it, but they're really trying to push legislation to reduce um, the EEPs for microbreweries, cervecerias, uh, artisanales. Um, so that being said, regarding wh whiskey, vodka, and all that, anything above 14% alcohol is in another bracket of EEPs. And uh, my accountant down here said, Jim, let's just do beer, beer first. Let's get, you know, Let's get going, let's get everything dialed in with the beer first, and then you can start manufacturing uh, whiskey. But that being said, I should be able to start producing whiskey and selling it inside the restaurant here without having to pay EEPs. So I'm still learning. This is you know, not the US, and uh, um, there's some pros and there's some cons. Uh, so I'm, I'm learning as I go, but I, I promise, um, we're gonna make some more whiskey, make some more vodka. Uh, the other part of it is that I only have two tanks downstairs, uh, two fermenters, and they're uni tanks. So right now they're both occupied with beer. One has the, the honey beer in it, and the other one has a, a new IPA that we're making. Um, so I can't really just go, hey, I'm gonna make a, a batch of whiskey right now and uh, put it into the still because I don't have the space. We are going to finish paying our deposit down on our brewery system that, that's in uh, China right now. Um, at the time that I bought the equipment, there was no manufacturers that I was aware of here in Mexico for stainless steel uh, brewery equipment. Um, so I did buy a, a, a Chinese made um, and they are good quality and uh, I've seen their work. Uh, so uh, we'll be um, finalizing the payment in July, I think, or June and that will be coming down here. So I'm excited about that. We'll have a lot more room. We'll have three fermenters, two bright tanks, a, um, a lenticular filter, and I'll be able to brew a batch of single malt or bourbon recipe, you know, 51% corn, 49% malt, and I'll be able to distill it, uh, uh, you know, within a, several days of it fermenting. So I'm really excited about that. But anyway, just wanted to give you guys an update. I appreciate for the patience. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, like the video. And uh, any suggestions that you see here, uh, let me know. You know, we're kind of going for the El Natural look, you know. So I'm not sure that we're going to do a whole bunch of painting. Once we get the tables in, we'll put some lights and hanging and everything. But if you have any cool ideas, what might look cool in here, please let me know and give me your ideas. Certainly do appreciate it. Thanks, guys.